Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We are going to kick off today's exploration of new music, checking out a new track from Atomic Guava that came out earlier this week. I discovered Atomic Guava through OK Good Night, which is a fantastic prog metal band. Um, on one of their latest music videos for The Bear, off of their latest album, uh, I noticed they had a second singer there. and uh, It was Elizabeth Hole who was featured on the track and is the lead singer for Atomic Guava. So I added them to my list. I actually just checked out their latest album, Peasants from the Future, last weekend. And they are prog metal only because I don't know where else to put them. <laughs> They do dream style theater, dream theater style prog. They do uh, death metal. They have mathy ideas. Uh, they're just kind of generally all over the place. They have some electronica aspects, poppy vocal sections. Uh, you really have no idea what you're getting into when you listen to an Atomic Guava track. And that's one thing that I find really exciting about them. So. Let's dive into their latest one, Dragons from Perdition. Very epic to start this off. Okay, taking us in a folky direction that I was not expecting. The China on the offbeat is a nice switch up. Super groovy. What? The symbols were consistent. What time signature was that? It's all over the place. Spicy there. Darkness lends me blithe discretion, stealing silently before the stream.
I was really curious where that uh, rhythmic syncopation was going in the drums underneath that. I, I thought we were going to head towards a breakdown of some sort. I love the metric stuff going on in the drums. It's this constant speeding up of slowing down use of uh, tuplets and longer and shorter notes. Wonderful bit of vibrato on that. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot there's a folk aspect to this. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty good. And the thing is, too, something that I, I really enjoyed about the album and is quite on display here is it toes a really nice line between that uh, seriousness that I think you sort of have to have uh, an element of seriousness anytime that you kind of reach these levels of musicianship right they're they're especially on the faster the synth solo uh, the guitar solo some of the drum work in here um, even just the larger than life aspect, it all kind of brings a seriousness to it because they are obviously exceptionally serious about their craft, both as composers and as performers on whatever instruments they play. Um, this isn't just, you know, not to discredit any bands like this, but this isn't just your, your punk garage band who, you know, have four chords under their belt and, and just kind of stick within the pocket. There is obviously a, a lot of uh, seriousness to improving themselves and reaching these levels of uh, skill and proficiency on their instruments. Um, and I feel like that seriousness bleeds over into this as well, but it isn't the standard mode of operation. There is quite a many points in here where I found it to be comical, both where they went and how they achieved different sounds or ideas, the way that concepts bounced off of each other, the way that they transitioned between ideas, the inclusion, the sheer inclusion of some highly absurd concepts. What I'm getting at is that it, it walks this line, very fine line, between um, a comedy band or a band that has uh, tongue-in-cheek uh, just has a, a comical approach, uh, an understanding of what they're doing and don't mind dipping a little bit into absurdity um, or even just uh, switching up the entire tone in the lyrics, which we'll get to in a moment, uh, a long moment, because lyrics are the last thing we touch. Uh, but there is one line in there that just... <sighs> the, the shift from from vibe with the with these set of lyrics which it just caught me off guard and i chuckled it's just there is a seriousness to this that isn't totally undercut by a playfulness and i think that they work together in a way that uh amplifies both sides of the writing so what is some of the seriousness what what is this this writing that we have going on in here honestly i'm going to miss a lot of stuff in this analysis primarily because I forgot most of it there's so much that goes on and that's one of the first things I want to talk about is the structure which this is a rhapsody that eventually loops back to a course but not even a full loop back oh, it loops back to our a section too because it does bring in the folk metal part that I completely forgot about and then we go into the course but it's a variation on the chorus which I thought was very cool before leading us back into a one-to-one -one replication of it and ending the track. I don't know how many sections there were, but it would be 
and the structure would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Just a series of, of sections in there, then we return back to our A and our B. And even the B would be a, a variation and then a return, so it's not a, a perfect A, B copy-paste there at the end either. Um, and there's so many sections here in the middle um, that even up until the ending, when we finally looped back to something, it felt just like a series of ideas, and there's just no way I can remember all that. Um, but I do enjoy the Rhapsody style structure. I love linear tracks. Um, that's not to say that I don't enjoy loop based or repetitive or even the stereotypical A, B, A, B, C, B. I enjoy a lot of songs that utilize repetition in the structure. But there's something about linear tracks that always grabs me um, in a way that the others don't. And I really appreciate this track, especially since it seems to be about dragons and a journey to, I don't know, I only picked up a head full of lyrics. Uh, some of it seemed to be in the perspective of people talking about the dragons and others were from the perspective of the dragon and maybe that had to do with the vocal switch. I don't know. We'll get into that later. But the song felt like a journey and I think it kind of went along with the idea of the lyrics possibly. There's a lot of sound in here. We kick off, I, I almost forgot about this entirely. We kick off with choir and brass. We move then to folk, which brings in a metal band, bass, one guitar, eventually a second guitar. Uh, the first one starts left pan, the second one comes in right. We get the drums under it. We eventually bring in vocals and very important right here, we have a flute. <laughs> Uh, or possibly a tin whistle. I'm not 100% sure. There's a lot of instruments that sound very similar to that. Um, and it gives us this nice syncopated folky idea to sit above the metal. From here though, everything just kind of blurs for me. We do bring in harsh vocals to go against the cleans but interestingly the cleans transition into triads we get harmony there and they kind of have a back and forth thing going on uh the time signature i don't even know if i have no idea what the time signature is in this chorus we come out of this though and just a smorgasbord of sounds we have a section where it's full-on growls uh, we have synth and guitar dueling solos uh, I think we bring back the heavy harmony on the vocals at one section. Um, oh, we bring back this beautiful, uh, almost orchestral vocal style. Very, it's not a pratic, but it does kind of push the vocals to the back of the mouth uh, and puts a very, just a tasteful vibrato on it. It's so good. Uh, the drums come in under that and begin to lean into a, uh, a bridge style, not a bridge, a breakdown style rhythm that we never get into, which I thought was interesting. I don't remember where we went after this though, but I remember that it was like da-da-dun, da-dun, dun-dun, da-da-dun, da-da-dun-dun. Da -da -dun. And like, the, I think the guitars were in on this too. So we just have this single note rhythm underneath these belting vocals. And I was like, this is our foreshadowing. We're gonna transition into this rhythm full on as a breakdown. And then we did it. I, like I said, I don't remember where we went. Uh, what else? I know I'm missing something big. There's an instrument in here. I don't remember what it is. We have quite a few guitar tones. Uh, even the electric, I think all the guitars are electric in this, if I remember right. Um, but we have some that are a bit meatier with more bass presence. We have some that are a bit brighter. Um, we have a couple of synth tones in here. I think there's some strings at one point too. I don't remember. There's just a lot of sounds, a lot of timbres coming through, uh, and it's uh, it it really keeps you interested. <laughs> I don't know how many people could listen to this and uh, be bored. You know, if it's not your cup of tea, whatever. You know, you're gonna be bored. But if you're enjoying this, um, I think just the smorgasbord of sounds, every section kind of having its own sonic identity, is uh, 
it's going to keep you uh, engaged with it. Speaking about Sonic Identity, I want to talk about production for a second because every section is kind of its own. There's the choir opening, the folk metal A, the death metal bridge, the uh, prog rock solo section. It's very easy to assign a genre to most of these uh, sections of the track. But I think what's really interesting is how everything still ends up feeling interconnected somehow. And I don't quite know why. Some of it is certainly going to be foreshadowing and callbacks of ideas that ties everything together compositionally, but I don't think that's the only thing going on here. I think there is an aspect of the production that helps everything feel fluid as well, and just not being as well versed in production. I don't know exactly what it is, but even though we may drastically change a sound, I, and I never really felt like we were, uh, well, channel surfing. Right, that is that is the the name that I tend to give songs that jump between ideas with every section, and I don't get that idea here. This feels cohesive for one reason or another, and like I said, I think the composition is uh, key here, but it's certainly not the only aspect, and that leads me to production. And I don't know. I'm really curious how they go about the creation of their music but this one in particular since we're talking about it um, compositionally how do they uh, attempt to create these ties between everything but I'm also really curious about the production side and if any of this is something they're consciously thinking about and they listen to it like eh, it feels too much like a different track we need to tweak some stuff uh, and how they would go about doing that because honestly this is a lot more cohesive and connected than it has any right to be <laughs> Uh, and it just seems so effortless in the way that it changes uh, ideas. Honestly, it, it's it's surprising to me, and I wish I knew more about whatever. It's I think it's easy for me to pick out when things aren't cohesive and to figure out why. But it's always more difficult to figure out why something works because it's usually more on a nuanced side. It's it's the big things, the obvious things that make things not work. But when you're talking about uh, creating things that work, whether they sound good or they run together good or uh, they're catchy, those are the things that I think we have less documentation about. And it's because it's more on the nuance level. You really have to know what's going on. Uh, and being that it's production, I think it's a little bit there that I don't have the knowledge on. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about here? Like I said, I'm, I'm probably missing a lot of stuff, but I think that's about it. Everybody plays fantastic. The production sounds great. It's, it feels cohesive and it's fun and serious simultaneously in a way that I think makes both sides work better. A quick little recap. Let's hit some lyrics. I read the lyrics twice and wasn't quite sure what it was about. I got the idea of uh, a king of a medieval town that just wasn't too great to the people who ruled over and they kind of hated him. And uh, that somebody had some dragons and was ready to kill everyone with the dragons. Uh, but beyond that, I, I kind of lost. And something helped me. In the description for this music video, it says, We wrote a song about a time traveler cowboy from the future who summons the power of the dragons to slay an evil and greedy king for an impoverished medieval town. <laughs> Talk about a concept. Uh, and so the lyrics got put more into sense. I knew who the, the person who had the dragons was, what they were fighting for, and I mean, that's... That's the whole song right there. I mean, the first verse talks about this king. It says he lives in a castle higher than anything else. Jewels everywhere. Uh, and it talks about how the, the streets are filled with people, young, homeless. And uh, nothing can end this king's reign. He's just terrible for everyone, but he just won't die. Uh, and so they 
invoke the sigil of the ancient ones to bring forth inferno from the smoldering wings of perdition's spawn. Holy dragons, deliver us. Uh, and I guess this is about the time where our cowboy comes in. And he says, <laughs> oh man, in the best ways. He says, bro, I've got a dragon on my side. What are you going to do? Are you even going to try to come at me? <laughs> Just so ridiculous. He's a cowboy. Uh, and that's that's pretty much the whole song. Um, it is just as ridiculous of a concept as the music is in its expanse of exploring so many different genres, but it all sort of comes together in a very, to me, a very 90s way. <laughs> the ridiculousness of it, uh, of all of it, just creates a cohesive whole somehow. Um, and I quite enjoy it. I'm a fan of absurdity, though. And Atomic Guava really leans into that, both musically and apparently lyrically. I haven't listened to, or I haven't checked out the lyrics to that album yet. I only gave it a single listen. Um, but if this is if this is the kind of writing I have to look forward to, I definitely need to give it another listen with lyrics pulled up, because this is just bonkers, and I love every minute of it. Those are my thoughts on Atomic Guava's Dragons from Perdition. Let me know what you thought of this one. Give me your perspectives, your comments, your anything else, if you enjoyed it or not. Uh, just opinions, I don't know. Put it all down there. Let me know what's going on. Above that, in the description box, you can find a link to Linktree, which will take you to this menu right here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. We have one more new track that we're going to check out today. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow. We have a full album review to look at. And, uh, oh yeah, i got to get my theme thoughts um, for tomorrow as well. It's a good thing I remembered that. <laughs> uh, tomorrow would have come and there would have been no theme thoughts. I need to uh, record that next, I suppose, or after. Anyways... Uh, none of this has to do with the video. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening. Mm -hmm.